seeing so many people in here. My name is Anders Holmstrand. Uh, I'm the product manager for a software as a service called Starlify. And uh, just briefly about myself, I've been in the software industry for more than 20 years. Mostly based in Sweden, a uh, pretty large company started out as a developer at Ericsson, uh, like 100 years ago or something, and been a systems architect, spent the last 10 years or so maybe within product management, development management, and uh, DevOps, basically. Uh, so, the pretty presumptuous title and the fastest way to map and control your application landscape. Uh, this is going to be a demo session, and I'll show you briefly what this tool is about. But um, who here were at uh, the keynotes yesterday? Bill and, and Z spoke. So Z mentioned the um, something that got stuck in my head as well, the um, Dr. Jekyll and, and Mr. Hyde version, where I well one of the two were th the business value, which often kind of gets lost because we're techie people. I'm a tech person myself. So marrying these two together is part of what Starlify brings to the table. Uh, you want to have kind of both within your scope of vision when you develop something. Uh, and Starlify is um, a way to navigate complexity within your integration projects, really. So we come from the integration business uh, to begin with. So I am going to shift over to another of the slides. So what do you want to know about applications? What's an application landscape good for, and how does the business value come in there? Well, you want to know the dependencies and the relations between everything. So you can develop lots of APIs, but you want to know who's using them and why, and how does it stick together. Very rarely you will have one call to an API that gives you a business value. It's more of a process that begins somewhere, and you will have a more complex chain of events happening. That type of vision, that type of understanding usually gets lost. And we have customers then coming to us saying that, you know, we started implementing something. We, we sh made a shift of our ERP system, but we lost track of a number of dependencies we had and led to accidentally shutting down a number of business critical processes. So that's kind of what we're trying to solve here. And let me see. So this is what Starlify looks like. Uh, it's a very simple model. This is what we call a... Uh, I mean, here's a small uh, network and application landscape. The little green nodes here are your systems, your applications. The light blue ones will be uh, services, typically APIs, that a, s uh, a system can then offer someone to use. And the purple balls are uh, contracts, references, we call them in our system, so the actual integrations. Another system then is using an API. And this is a very... Uh, I mean, there, there are other representations as well, but this is the fundamentals of Starlify, where you very, very quickly can gain an understanding of how your system actually ties together. So we'll, we'll get back to a little bit more of uh, uh, the details of it. But the thing is, this is pretty simple, and it pretty soon you don't have to be a large company. You'll end up with something like this, where you have lots and lots of integrations. There's just so much going on. But not to worry, Starlify is here to help you find whatever you're looking for. So we're a very search-based uh, tool. I mean, very rarely you want to see the entire picture, but you need to know how everything ties together in order to find what you're actually looking for. So basically, you would probably find the system because you know what you're after. And you can expand from that and understand, OK, what are my dependencies? So with a couple of clicks, I probably you know, mimicked what uh, most of you have done on whiteboards uh, for several hours with people. This is one fast example, but that's the kind of way it goes. And once you have uh, maybe a brief understanding, there are, of course, details to what's going on here. So if we dive into this, every, every node type will have uh, a detail panel so where you can see what's going on. Uh, and there are three tabs, like the general, little description, what's the system doing? Uh, I went into the product information system in this demo. It's actually based on a real customer. They allowed us to obscure uh, the data and then go into it. And the interesting part is the relations tab. So looking at this, you have, OK, uh, do I have a parent system? Uh, do I have any subsystems myself, typically modules if you're a very big type of system? Uh, do I expose any services to the world? I do, in this case, a product API. 
do I own any references, any contracts to other services? Uh, what network do I belong to? Networks is a logical entity within Starlify, how you kind of uh, divide uh, all your data. Uh, not going to delve into that too much, but an interesting part is finding out who's the owner. Who do I need to contact? Usually it's kind of the first step of a project. In a complex project, in a larger company, who actually owns this system? Who should I talk to in order to kind of get us going? Uh, there's something called flows down here, and I'm going to get back to that as well. But an interesting aspect, we, we try to do it as simple as possible to kind of navigate and get you further down, like understanding your, uh, your network. So you can click here. Now we dove into the product API instead. So now you're here and you can see that, okay, it's provided by the PIM system. It's consumed by a number of other systems. And you can keep on going like this and you can kind of click your way through. And now, now we're in the web system. You can tell that there's, there, there are other things going on. And you can go back and forth. There's another tab worth mentioning, the Properties tab. That's a metadata tab. You populate yourself uh, the uh, type of metadata that you want to be searchable. Once again, we are very focused on making it easy for you to find what you're looking for. So the search aspect of metadata is really important. And this is where information objects come into play. So here in this example, well, there's an open API uh, link uh, description, but also the information objects that you can kind of tag this with and then it's searchable. So with a very simple click, you can find everything dealing with uh, product-based information ob uh, objects. Uh, this example also had like, for the services, uh, it's a REST API, you can choose something else. If you go to uh, another type of node, in this case then an application node, you would end up with a different set of metadata that you choose yourself. So uh, I think it's worth mentioning that Starlify can offer additional uh, business value if you deal with compliance. A lot of you have to do that. Well, do I have uh, personal data? Do I have GDPR data in here? Tag your systems. Once again, find them with the simple search, like I showed you before, and boom, you have all that data right at your fingertips if you want to do an audit or something like that. So there, there are a lot of different facilities in, in Starlify. But let's see. I promised you I would come back to the concept of flows. And this is my kind of where we add maybe the, the biggest part into looking at marrying business value and tech value together. So flows are end-to-end -end integrations, built up then by multiple of these references, multiple contracts. So usually, uh, as I said, you don't you just do one API call and something is done. Usually, that triggers a number of processes. In this case, it's a product being added to your PIM system. And what happens then is that other systems will want this information, your warehouse management system in this case, your BI, and so on. So a bunch of these contracts will make up a more complex end-to-end -end integration. And this is where people usually get lost. If you start a project, do you really know all these dependencies before you start implementing something? Maybe we bring something to the table for you. And let's go back to big, big picture. Big balls, lots of balls. Uh, there are actually a number of ways. As I said, we try to work hard on features that make it a bit easier to see what you're dealing with. And uh, we can kind of divide this into a more flowery and stalk-like picture. Uh, there's also the, the toggle concept. Um, as I said, if you, if you what we try to do as well is that we're not only for developers. It's really, really interesting for developers to understand what are my dependencies? Who should I talk to? What's going on? If I, if I change the system here in the middle, there are lots going on. I mean, I need to talk to a lot of people. And for some other balls here, though, I mean, if you're, out, if you're out here somewhere, you don't have that many dependencies. But you still need to find out what's going on and who should I talk to and what do I need to consider before implementing changes. Uh, but then again, if you're a different person, if you're um, a system owner or an IT manager, maybe you want to see a slightly condensed version of what's going on here. So you can toggle off you know, down to only having applications. This is something that you might you know, you can drag and drop the balls a little here and there, and then you can show it at a board meeting to understand the complexity of the projects that you have to undertake as a company. So 
quickly kind of drew got you through what Starlify really is. I think you get the concept. Uh, and I would like to add then that usually we get the question, so how do you populate this then? Well, there are a number of answers to that. Of course, we have our API ourselves, so you can populate it via different repositories. Maybe you have multiple sources that you want to go in here. Uh, what we usually find is that the information I'm talking about, the actual contracts and especially end-to-end -end integrations, hard to find. If they're available, they're usually available maybe in some, some Visio drawings or something else, usually buried down in project areas and available to maybe a select few people. So the way you use Starlify is that you invite everyone in your organization. So everyone has access. You can crowdsource the information. Actually, I, <laughs> I would like to invite you to go to our, our website, get a, get a free trial, play around with it. We've made the GUI fun and interactive to use. So crowdsourcing it, giving each team the task of actually you know, keep track of your world, make it accessible to everyone. It's not a bad way to go. But of course, you can start by having a, some sort of you know, ground truth to put from other repositories, maybe incorporate it into your CI, CD if you're tech, uh, tech level, and just make sure it's always there. So in conclusion, the um, application network that we provide, the integration level that we provide in Starlify, we do believe it gives you uh, an edge uh, and saves you a lot of valuable time. And I would like to invite you to uh, come over. Now I need to move my brilliant presentation over here. <gasps> and say that come by our booth because we're a sponsor of this event. So by the stairs. I'm going to be there. My colleagues are going to be there. Come have a chat or, as I said, go into starlify.com. Uh, get yourself a, a free trial workspace and, and try it out. See if it's something for you. And with that, I am going to conclude this talk and say thank you very much.